there's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out now. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. That's pretty good, but I think we can do a little better. On the second. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing out now. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Do you believe that? Say amen. On the third, would you be wider, much wider? Snow. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, one work in power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, one work in power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Sing out loud on the last. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to see? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. That's good. In the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All God's people say it. Amen. Amen. That's good singing tonight. Good to see all of you out this evening. Got more folks coming in. What a blessing it is uh, to be able to come to church tonight. It's a joy. And, you know, in these times, every time you walk in that door, it's a, it may be your last, so just enjoy it. Enjoy it. May not even be able to get to do this for long, um, but we're going to do it as long as we can by the help of the Lord. And uh, uh, it's good to see everybody out this evening. Uh, thank the Lord for the good services this morning. Um, uh, I need to make a quick fact check correction this morning. I, when I said that about the entire year for the economy, our whole GDP gross whatever you call that product, is $21 trillion. So that five that I quoted this morning was not exactly, I got thinking about that on the way home. That's up to this certain point. The whole year, the United States uh, economy runs about $21 trillion. Supposed to be 22 this year. But anyway, I thought I'd correct that. I figured somebody might have picked that up. But anyway, um, uh, that's a heap of dough either way you look at it. Uh, a, a trillion is a thousand billion a thousand billion. A billion is a thousand million. If you have a thousand million dollars, you're a billionaire. And you'd have to have a thousand billion to be a trillionaire. And the economy is 22 trillion. And by the way, that's about how much we are in debt. Uh, so we can't even pay our bills as a country. Um, uh, this very, very sad, scary situation. People are 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 panicking. Uh, some are overconfident. Some are way underconfident. And our philosophy is what it's always been. Our trust is in the Lord, not in the government, not in the doctors. I, I thank God for good doctors. I thank God for good leaders or whatever, uh, whatever kind of you know, the best we got. <laughs> but our trust is in the Lord who made heaven and earth. And uh, he will trust. And if the Lord chooses to bring our whole country down this way, he's totally justified in doing it. And uh, we'll leave this world trusting him. If we get sick, we'll trust him. If we stay well, we'll trust him. We hope for the best, expect the worst, take what comes, keep the mouth shut, and thank God you ain't in hell. Could, amen. 
That's the best philosophy you'll ever hear. Thank God you ain't in hell. Amen. God's been good to us. And so uh, during these times, we are very privileged to be able to meet like this. A lot of people can't. I'm getting texts from New York, from California, uh, from all, saying, you guys, y'all are so lucky. You get to go to church. You are so blessed. You get to go to church. We don't get to. And um, it may be coming here. So let's enjoy it while we can. Keep your distance. Uh, you're way, way more distant here than people are at Walmart or at the post office or at the gas station uh, or at work. So just keep, play everybody be safe. I appreciate Brother Steve Burns. Uh, man, I'm telling you, he had this place. Lord, it smelled like a bottle of Clorox in here this morning. And uh, I, I love it. I've always loved to smell Clorox. My mom, my mom cleaned everything in Clorox. She'd wipe Clorox on us kids. Uh, 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 that's how he got rid of poison oak. Uh, uh, Clorox kill anything. And uh, it'll kill AIDS. It would. But if you could get it to go right to it, it'd kill you too. <laughs> but uh, um, he's, he's, he's following people. In the bath, every time the bathroom door open, he's wiping it down. We do have our ultraviolet lights placed already in here and that takes any germs off of your clothes uh or anything that's hard to believe that's how they get it off money and stuff so uh thank god brother steve and uh, doing that hard work and all all that he's he's done i want to say another thing or two right quick before we pray um i preached uh on uh being positive in a pandemic wednesday night and this morning i preached two sermons um uh, don't panic in a pandemic, and then profiting or or uh, prospering in a pandemic. So now I'm gonna preach about praying in a pandemic. So I'm gonna have a whole series of sermons about the pandemic, uh, and then we'll do some other stuff. And Wednesday night I got something real special, so don't don't miss that. Um, uh, I, I'd like for us to uh, pray for a lot of people that's that's sick and need prayer, um, uh, one thing and another. And then, of course, let's pray for this situation. Let's also, I want to pray for um, pastors, pastors, other pastors. It's, it's this, this situation puts pastors in a terrible predicament. Our job is, it's different than everybody else's because we're supposed to be, quote, men of faith. So I, I've been hearing from a lot of preachers across the country and bless their hearts, they're having a hard time. I don't have a hard time because my I've changed, I ain't changed what I've always done to start with. But some of them are in a mess. Uh, they're fussing and arguing. The people are. I know of a pastor in another state who called the services off and said, we're going to meet, and, and people got mad and said, it's just a bunch of junk. He should trust the Lord more. And then if he don't do it, you should see people say he's tempting God. And you got, you got people going to criticize you either way. And so please pray for pastors. I've had them call me. What do I do, Brother Danny? I, I said, I don't do what the Lord tells you to do. I don't know. You do whatever God tells you to. I was, somebody feels like they don't need to come in here, that's totally fine. They may wind up being right. Uh, uh, we respect that, but, uh, I'll do what I've always done. Leave it up to the Lord, but pray for pastors. The last thing we need is people in the church fussing about this. Lord have mercy. That's the last thing we need. But has there ever been a time when we need to arm together as brothers and sisters and pray and seek God? It's now. And Christian, they were fussing back and forth. Uh, this church was on where or when or if to have their services. And so that's that's a sad situation. So please, please pray uh, for these pastors that have to make these tough decisions. I mean tough because they no matter which way they go, they say, if I do this, this crowd's going to get mad at me. If I do that, that crowd's going to get mad at me. If we have church, they're going to say we're tempting God. If we don't have church, they're going to say you ain't got no faith. So you're you're doomed either way. So your best philosophy is you do what God tells you to do, and you don't have to have a second opinion. That's right. My pastor said, he said, you obey God, and you don't need a second opinion. You just make sure you're obeying God. And uh, so I'm trying to do that best of my ability. I promise you that. I don't feel guilty about this. So um, let's pray for pastors that have to make hard decisions. Some of them have large churches, and some of them have churches where you can't have different two or three services like we're doing. Um, you know, you get way up there in the thousands, you, it, it's impossible. And they're going to be hurting financially. Uh, churches that will have a lot of debt and stuff are going to really, really be feel the crunch here in the next few, in the next few weeks. 
I mean, they're operating on a week-to-week basis, -week, uh, tremendous bills and expenses, and, and everybody's going to feel that. So let's pray for our uh, bigger churches. Most of the smaller churches are not affected one way or the other. Their bills are paid, and they can go right on and shout the victory. And uh, that's, I guess that might be one advantage of a small church. But uh, let's pray for them also. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's pray for... Um, a country, a world, pray that God's will will be done, the Lord will help us, and I'm going to talk about prayer tonight. So if you've got something or somebody on your heart you'd like for us to pray for, let's do that right now. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, we come thanking you for this beautiful weather outside, Lord, for the, for the spring. Lord, I'm so thankful to see the trees budding and the flowers blooming and the uh, all the, the grass turning green that reminds us you're still here, you're still running this universe. Father, our world is plunged into spiritual and, and now spiritual and physical darkness as we speak. God, I pray that somehow a great revival would come of this. I pray that somehow people would turn to you in great numbers like never before. Lord, I pray that you'd use this situation to reach medical doctors and nurses and those that work in the hospital and the fire and rescue and the policemen. And, the, and I pray for your preachers, pastors, and missionaries all over the world. Lord, those that are trying to lead and be faithful to you. And at the same time, being sensitive to the needs of the people. I pray that you'd bless them. And I pray that you'd encourage them. And I pray for every pastor, Lord. They need our prayers. They need our support. They don't need our criticism. They don't need our backbone. Lord, they need our support right now. I pray for every man of God that you'd lead them and help them to know how to be the leader that they should be in these dark days. I pray for those that are sick uh, with, the, with the virus. I pray that you'd touch them and heal them. I pray that this thing will be lifted off of our land like an old fog will disappear. I pray, God, that you'd give us grace to live for you until that happens. And Lord, if we see in dark days ahead, help us to trust in you, to trust in you. Whether we're sick or well, alive or dead, our faith will be in you. Have you in our hearts tonight? Move on all these special requests. People in this county that are hurting, that are suffering, that are searching, that are scared, that are worried. I pray that you'd help us to point them to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now do what ought to be done this evening. Bless the service in a great and powerful way. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. All right. Now, right quick, now, don't forget, now, Wednesday night, we've got something really special planned, so uh, you be sure and be here, come praying. Our schedule's going to remain like it was today. That worked out great this morning. Uh, I, this will be the third time I've preached today, and they say preaching's like working an eight-hour shift, so if it's true, that'll make me 24 hours a day. That's good for me. I need it. I need it because I, I've been, uh, I've been, ain't, ain't been getting to run like I was, um, but um, I, I, can, I can feel it today i'll feel it before this day's over i promise you so uh stay busy uh stay alert keep the kids in 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 the lord's work and teach them the bible and teach them to pray and god will bless you for it now um as i mentioned this morning uh the youth rally has been postponed i can't uh i just can't with a good conscience say it's canceled or uh hopefully hopefully we'll be able to have it later on in the spring when things smooth out if that happens so as of now we can't even use the fairground uh you can get that they won't even let us have it so uh let's uh pray about that and um all the other things i really really hope we get to have a good easter sunday man i'm telling you i've been a great easter service ever since i've been saved and i hope things died down a little bit by then uh, about three or four weeks or three weeks from now whenever it is and so uh, let's pray about that too all right um also it's a good time to get things done around the house and uh we've got people here in the church um uh, that's willing to help. Uh, we we got all these weeds out here need to be cut. If you guys want to come up, well, I was going to do it tomorrow evening. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, but maybe maybe Thursday evening if some of you guys want to come and work, bring the young men, young boys. We'll uh, we'll cut some weeds, do some paint and stuff like that. And uh, we also have people that are that's out of work. Uh, I know Eric is, and maybe some others, and just needing side jobs, side work. He can do anything. Like uh, uh, if anybody needs any work done, 
hire, hire somebody in the church, uh, build you, build you a deck, clean up around the house, do patch roofs, uh, uh, carpenter doors, anything like that. If you do something and you have free time, let me know. And it's a good time to have people in church come over and help you work um, and get some stuff done like that. Uh, so keep that in mind also. Okay. All right. We're going to be friendly a little bit this evening. So turn around. Let's all stand. Turn around and wave at each other just for a second. standing for offering now. Everybody remain standing. Ushers are going to come. Let's all give this evening and honor the Lord. Um, while they're getting ready, get you something to write. Watching online. Uh, we Somebody, we hadn't got home today. And Kelly was checking email. Just comment, 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 comment. Unbelievable. The people that were watching this morning. Um, over 3,000 people have watched that last Sunday service. Counting the the CDs that we give out. And by the way, he's making more tonight. So you take them, give them out, and you go in the grocery store, say, here, would you like to know what the Bible says about the coronavirus? Hand them one. Uh, coronavirus, the Bible, hand them one. Take them as you go out tonight. They're free. And uh, just make sure you put them out. Now, get something to write with. Uh, for you that are at home, if you want to send your offering, you can mail it. P.O. 77. It's easy to remember. 177. Nebo. N-E-B-O. Right from your elbow. Right. Nebo, North Carolina, 28761. 28761. 28, you're writing 761. 177. Uh, while they're writing that down, um, one of you computer geniuses, I'm sure Andy, some of you folks can, people have asked about setting up a link that they can give online electronically. So if you could work on that for us, that'd be great. I hate to say that because people are like, oh, them preachers, you have money. But people have asked, how do we give? How do we give? We want to give. Somebody emailed, and there's some up in Illinois or somewhere just today saying, we'd like to send money down there to help y'all. We can't go to church. How do I do it? And I say, I have no idea. P.O. Box 177 is all I can tell you. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. P.O. Box 177, Nebo, North Carolina, 28761. Okay, let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving. We ask you now in Jesus' name that you'd bless this offering tonight. We're glad that we've got something to give. Lord, the time may come when we don't, but we're thankful that we do now. I pray that you'd bless every single person here tonight. Lord, bless those that maybe don't have anything. Bless them in a mighty way. Thank you. The doors are open at Shining Light Baptist Church. I pray that the light will go out of here this evening and shine around this world. Bless this money, multiply it, and meet the needs we have in Jesus' name. Amen. This is one, two. Make sure my mic's on, y'all. Hold on. special singing group here tonight so special singers uh get ready to get up here come on special singers and uh, we got a real treat for you tonight you're gonna be glad you come this 
Amen. Hallelujah. All right, special singers. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, we got a little. This is our ensemble praise team here tonight, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna sing for you this evening, and uh, we'll we'll get them ready here. Okay. All right, we ready? Introducing on this song, special Frankie Castle. Amen. Lord, for all you've done, I don't deserve your love. When I was lost, you saw my need and left your home above. Your love on Calvary, oh. you bore my sin and shame. I live for you for all my days. I bless your oh. holy name. What a singer there. Hey, man. He sings all the way to church. He sings that. All you got to do is say the first word. Hi, you, you, hi, you, you. Sound like a little Polynesian in it there. But it's good. Hey. What a blessing. Brother Frank, you were privileged to hear that in person for the first time in a crowd like this. So praise the Lord for that. You know what? Ain't you glad? Hallelujah. We can pass some hope on to these kids. Ain't you glad? In this world, buddy, if anything this thing has done, it's got people's attention and saying, everything you've got can be gone just like that. The whole economy could crash and might just like that. And buddy, people, uh, listen, you know, when the German mark failed over there and their mark, like our dollar, uh, they said they, people had a lot of money. You know what they done with it? Maybe use it for wallpaper. That's the best thing you can do with it. And when those days come, and they will come, it may not be in 20 years, it may be a long time, maybe next year. Make sure you love, I love you, Lord, because of Calvary. Good time to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your Bibles this evening, turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 7. The book of 1 Samuel chapter number 7. I'll give you just a short background of this story this evening, and then I'll uh, bring the message by the help of the Lord. The book of 1 Samuel, I'm preaching on praying in a pandemic. Praying in a pandemic. Samuel was one of the great men of the Old Testament. One of the greatest, in my opinion, of 
the Old Testament. He was uh, had an unusual calling on his life in that his mother, Hannah, was not able to have children. And you know the story. She prayed and prayed and prayed. And she was in there in the temple begging, Lord, please give me a child. Please give me a child. Now, most of the time when something like that happened in the Bible where a woman was not able to have a child and prayed and prayed and prayed and finally had one, that was a very special child most of the time. That's just the way God did it. And Samuel was born. And the name Samuel means God has heard or name of God. Both of those meaning to the name Samuel. God has heard. Now, during these days, uh, uh, the, the priest Eli uh, was the, the priest when Samuel was just a little boy. And Hannah, his mother, gave him to the Lord and said, I'm going to give him to the Lord all the days of his life. This child's going to belong to God. Whatever God does with him, that's fine with me. By the way, that's good advice for you children. Give them to the Lord. Say, Lord, you can have my son. You can have my daughter. Whatever you want to do with them, Lord, your will be done. Best thing you can possibly do for them is say, Lord, they're yours. Now, uh, uh, when so uh, Samuel, just a little boy, he's laying in bed one night, and uh, he's just laying down there. And the Bible said Samuel did not know the Lord yet, or the word of the Lord hadn't been revealed to him. He wasn't, he's just a kid. And he's laying in the bed one night, and all of a sudden, here's somebody says, Samuel, Samuel. And he jumped up and he thought Eli over in the other room was calling him. So he runs over here like this and said, yes, sir, did you call me? And Eli said, I can call you. Go back to sleep, boy. You, you had, a, had a dream or something. I used to tell my girls this story when they were little. And I'd say, Samuel goes back in here. He lays back and goes lay down in the bed. And all of a sudden, the voice comes again. Samuel, Samuel. Eli, yes, sir, you, you need what you need, sir. He said, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. He goes in there again. Same thing happens. He lays down again. The Lord says, Samuel. Sam, he didn't know. He didn't know the Lord. He, no, nobody in there but him. And Eli, so he went in there and said, sir, you call me. And then Eli picked up on it. He said, now listen, that's not me. You go back in there and lay down. And the next time he says that, you say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And he said, okay. So he laid down that day, went uh, that night, and the Lord did. The Lord came that time and stood and said, Samuel. And he said, speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Bible said God got a hold of Samuel. God just anointed Samuel. And the Bible said God did not let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. That means everything old Samuel prophet, God backed him up and, and held him up in it. So uh, here and, and during this time, they had the ark was taken by the Philistines. The Philistines were the children of Israel's enemy during all through that Old Testament. It's fight Philistine, Israelite, Philistine, Israelite. And uh, they took the ark of God. Now the ark of God was that ark uh, uh, that they took with them in the wilderness that represented the presence of God. That was uh, the, the ark they made overlaid with gold. And in that thing was, uh, in that ark was three things. Can anybody tell me what's the three things that were in that ark? There was a pot of that manna uh, that had uh, preserved in there. There was a Moses rod that budded. And there was a copy of the Ten Commandments in that ark. They, they took it around with them. Now that represented the presence of God. When the ark of God was over, yeah, God was gone. When the ark came back, God came back. That represented his presence. Like what one fellow said one time, uh, he, he'd been hearing preaching, preaching. Uh, he, he had uh, a guy was talking to him about Noah's Ark, and he said, all right. He said, you about got me convinced. I, I guess I do believe in the Ark, but you're never going to get me to believe they carried that thing around the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, he thought they meant Noah's Ark. Uh, no, that, that was a different Ark. This was a uh, smaller one, and uh, this is the one you didn't touch unless you were supposed to. Uh, this thing electrocutes you, buddy. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, the Ark of God had been gone for seven months there in chapter 6 and verse 1, and then uh, over in the Kirjath Jerim for 20 years there, uh, there in chapter 7 and verse 2. Now, we pick up our reading here in chapter 7 and verse number 3. Here's what had happened. The presence of God was gone. The Lord was gone. 
Israel is messed up. They were backslid. They were in a mess, just like our country. The United States of America is to not. And um, so they, they, they were saying, and Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, verse 3, If you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. Now, uh, uh, you, can, you can hold your finger there just a second. And I want to say, you know how to pray during the pandemic? Uh, uh, you are to return unto the Lord. We ought to return unto the Lord. Now, to y'all, that's nothing. You hear that all the time. We all need to get right with God. We all need to get right with God. But did you know I would be totally rejected in most of the United States for saying what I just said? If I got to speak on the House, the Senate, or the or the Congress, and uh, all the, the the President and all the office of the world, if I got up there and I said, "All right, y'all, I can tell you what the answer to this pandemic is. We all got to get down on our knees and return to God," they would not accept that. They, it would not be accepted. You might have a few of them say, yeah, amen, you're right. But we have to be inclusive, and you can't tell people, you can't judge people, and, and it's never going to happen. Uh, not in this country. Our country's shot unless a miracle from God happened. But that's exactly what we need to do. The way out of this mess, people, is people return to God and get back to God. He can take something so little you can't even see it and wipe the whole world out if he wants to. I'm telling you tonight, the way out is the Lord. Jesus, when Listen, we put them signs up said, Jesus has answered all your problems. That ain't just a cute little sign. That's the truth. He's the answer. I didn't say he had the answer. I said he is the answer. He is the answer. He is the answer. And he said, if you return to the Lord, put away the strange gods. America ain't ready to do that. It ain't ready to do that. And I don't believe he's going to. There are people in America that I've even heard them say, they said, I'd rather die than to give up my sin. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Let me tell you people, when a a nation, like in the book of Jonah, when they repented and put their false gods away, God heard from heaven, it ain't enough just to pray. It ain't enough just as the president did call a day of prayer. That's good. Thank God for it. That's good. But you away the false gods. Right? You check that Old Testament. Every time there was a plague, every time there was judgment, people had to put away their false gods. Then God heard from heaven and healed their sin, or healed, forgive their sin, and healed their land. Buddy, I'm telling you, uh, uh, they got right. They served the Lord only. Uh, They got they got right with the Lord. Amen. Uh, They 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 got down to business. I mean, they got down to business. Look down there at verse number. Look at verse number uh, 6. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. Now, keep your Bibles open. We'll read a little bit more. They returned to the Lord. They returned to the Lord. I told you a few weeks ago, this country was riding high. And a few weeks ago, they they was all saying on the news, our stock market's never been greater. Wages are up. I'm telling you, brother, good times are here. All the businessmen that I've talked to said this is the best year we've ever had. The guy that makes them little signs like that right there. uh, He said, you know what he told me? He said, preacher, he wasn't being political. He said, a few years ago, we almost went out of business. He said, now I got people waiting in line for signs. He said, I can't keep them made fast enough. New homes are being built, stuff being sold, real estate's up, everything good. I mean, we was riding high, and I remember, I remember thinking uh, when when that guy, that, that guy, uh, old guy who's a homosexual was running for the president and and people were all every newsman everyone right left and in between they're all saying that does not matter that does not matter uh we either for him or against him but that has nothing to do i remember thinking ah y'all better shut your mouth you better shut your mouth when the leaders start but when our leaders including the president they all said it's fine 
No, it ain't fine. If a man's shacking up, it ain't fine. If a man's a drunk, it ain't fine. When our when our leaders start saying it's okay to be perverted, you can still be the president. They ain't but one thing can happen: the judgment of God's coming down. Right? I know you hate that. I know there'll be people say, "Oh, oh, you fear mongering, old judgmental, old Baptist friend." I'm telling you, I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace. I ain't no better than that man. I ought to be in hell tonight with my, but I got enough sense to know that God's what's right's right and what's wrong's wrong, and God's in charge. I still know my heavenly Father's on the throne. The one that lives inside me tonight's big enough to straighten this whole thing out. If America would get down on her knees and repent and get right with God. And go back to church and serve God. He'd fix this thing. Hallelujah. Don't hold your breath in this country. People's got it. Lord have mercy, I'm about to shout. I felt the touch of God on the other scene I found my closet. Woo! Pray. God's still on the throne, people. He's still on his throne. Amen. Return to the Lord. You know what the Bible said, old Samuel did? Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. The Lord heard him. The Lord heard him. Like the Lord heard David when David faced that giant. That nobody could fight. There was that big gigantic that nobody could fight. Nobody could fight him. Nobody could stand him. That's the coronavirus. Uh, Goliath. And old David looked down and he said, Lord, I, he said, I'm, I'm going to trust in you. He got them five smooth stones and he put them in his pocket. And somebody said, well, uh, Brother Danny, there wasn't but one giant. Why would he get five stones? He knew that giant had four brothers and he got one for every one of them. And he did have them. You can check it out later on over there. Four brothers and he's their daddy. See the inquirer for further details. And uh, uh, Lord, all kind of sick stuff like that. And uh, he, he put them four stones in his pocket and he took up and he come to that giant and that giant laughed at him. Uh, uh, Corona the giant. And Brother Corona the goodbye looked at him and said, Get out of here, boy. I'll destroy you. I'll destroy you. And old David reached down and got one of them things, rocks out of his pocket, put it in that sling. And he said, Let me tell you something right now, big boy. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a bacteria and a germ. But I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel, whose armies thou hast defied. And so I'll serve the living God. He took that rock and knocked his brains out. I mean, he knocked him flat to the ground took his own sword you know why cause little David little David put his faith and trust in God and the Lord heard him and the Lord heard him Joshua come to the walls of Jericho and the walls of Jericho were a great barrier and they said we can't do it we can't do it and Joshua said march and they said we can't do it Joshua that ain't gonna help he said march and they marched around one day one a day for six days seven times on the seventh day making a total of thirteen and when I got around there, he said, shout. And they shouted, brother, and the walls came down. I guarantee you tonight, if our country, if our country would get down on our knees and said, we've forsaken the Lord. We've forsaken the God of our fathers. We've forsaken the God of the, the guys that wrote the Constitution and our forefathers that believed the Bible. We're going to get right. We're going to get right with God. God would hear our prayers and heal our land. That's awful big talk for a little guy. I got a lot of big God. I'm telling you, I got a big God. I ain't nothing, but he is. Listen, I'd fall over right here and die, not and die. It wouldn't affect God's power one bit. I might have the coronavirus right now. And you, I hope I don't. I hope you have But listen, brother, either way, you want out of this mess, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Amen. Now listen. He said the Lord heard him. And then he said God let it thunder. Let's look at the famous ways to pray in a time of crisis. Take your Bible. Turn to Psalm, Psalm 12. In a time of emergency and crises. Like the day that you and I are living in. Psalm 12. Here's your good way to pray in a time of emergency and crisis. Keep your Bible open. We'll do a little quick Bible study. Psalm 12.1. It says this, help! That's good. That's deep, ain't it? 
I, you don't have to be a theologian to learn that. You don't have to go to Bible college. You don't have to know Greek and Hebrew. Help! Man, that time I was coming down the interstate several years ago, and I, I was coming, drove all night in the snow, and I thought the snow was gone. Guys, I got to Asheville. I drove from Kentucky, brother, to Asheville in snow. Some of it was that deep. And I had to go like this, and I got down the mountain in Old Fort, and I thought, Whew, I'm out of it. And there's black ice on the road. And I got it, got it to about 60 mile an hour, and all of a sudden that thing went this way and went that way, and then it went. And I forerunner. And I remember what I said. I didn't say, Our great and wonderful Heavenly Father, it is with a thankful heart the great God of Jehoshaphat, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew. I said, God help me! And I went, Bink! And turned all the way around, nothing wasn't coming, banged up against the guardrail a little bit, and cranked it up and turned around and drove on home. I believe he heard my cry. <laughs> I believe he heard my cry. Lord, help me! And I'm telling like Peter did when he was sinking. Old Peter was singing in there. He prayed three words. He didn't go into a big, long, detailed study of prayer. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus grabbed him. Like that right there. It's not the words. It's the sincerity of the heart. And brother, there it is. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter. Well, let's go back to one psalm. Do another psalm. 124. That's almost the end of psalm. Then we'll go to Matthew 20. Psalm 124. In Psalm 124, look at verse number 8. Psalm 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm all for disinfecting. I'm all for keeping safe distance. I don't think you ought to be silly in these times. I don't think you ought to, you know, tempt, tempt God and say, ah, I can't, that's stupid. People think like that are crazy. But at the same time, where all our trust is not in the medical doctor, or in, in, a, in a vaccine. Hope they do the best they can. Thank God I hope they do. But our hope is in this. Psalm 124 and verse uh, uh, number 31. Number 8, I'm sorry. Psalm 124 and verse 8. And it said this. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. There's where you help in. Turn to Matthew chapter 20. Let's get another one. You may need this for the week's out. You probably need it right now. You ain't no telling what's going to happen between this time next week, y'all. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 31. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 31. And there's a there's a, two blind men stood there in verse 30. Jesus passed by. Uh, and the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. They said, shut up, you people. Uh, leave this to the doctors. You ain't got no business doing it. And he said they cried the more, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and asked them what they needed. You know what we ought to do tonight? We ought to just say, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, protect my children. Lord, protect my husband. Lord, protect my wife. Keep this thing away from us. Build a hedge around us. Put a bubble over our home. Put a bubble over our family. Put a bubble over our church. Lord, help us. And God heard and answered that prayer. That's how to pray in a pandemic. The Lord help them. If there's ever been a time, they say right now, the conditions economically of our country right now are similar to the end of World War II. We're on the verge of an economic collapse. Because you see, they say, if we don't stop everything, the virus is virus going to get worse and worse and worse and millions of people will be infected. If we do stop everything, the economy blows up. So they're trying to balance it and keep as many people working as possible and the government, you know, you say, where do they get all that money? They'll just turn the machine on and print it up. It ain't really worth a, a dollar right now. That dollar in your pocket right now, of course, this is a few weeks ago, is worth 68 cents to what it was worth in 2000. A dollar in 2000 would be worth 68 cents now. It take That's what it would buy. And, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. If, if that happened... There, there's a balance in it. They say, we just go ahead and shut everything down and pump a bunch of money into it and hope it saves it. Or we can keep trying to balance it and hope it works out. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, a financial genius. I don't even understand how the stock market works. And 
You ought to be ashamed of yourself if you do unless you give a lot to God's work. But that being said, I want to say this. I want to say, listen, the Lord is in control. I got enough sense to know that. I'm not, I'm not a politician. I'm not a medical doctor. But I am a Bible preacher and I know what this book says. I can tell you what this Bible teaches and that Bible teaches over and over and over when God's people were up against uh, insurmountable odds when they got down and called on the Lord He would hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Don't look for that to happen. It might and I'd shout if it did. We as individuals can get right if anybody else don't or not. Now listen. Look at verse number 13. Of, of we're back in First Samuel seven now, and it said, uh, and First Samuel seven thirteen, and and it said uh, that the Lord took care of Samuel and them people all the days of Samuel. See the bottom of verse thirteen. The Lord subdued the Philistines. He pushed out the enemy, and he took care of them the whole time. Old Samuel was the pastor or whatever he was. And the Philistines taken to Israel were restored. What they took from Israel was restored. Everything the, the virus stole was put back. God blessed his people because they put away the strange gods. And that's what this country needs to do. Put away the strange gods. Close the bars, good. Close them for good. Close them for good. Amen. Amen. Thank God they are closed. Shut down the honky tonks, the head holes, the strip clubs, the casinos, and turn our hearts back to God. Amen. Is the answer. Years ago, uh, there's a lady, girl, grew up in Rome Mountain, Tennessee. Y'all know where it's at. Up yonder in them mountains. Rome Mountain, Tennessee is a beautiful place. I've been to that. But if you go the old way between Burnsville and Gatlinburg, you go up through them mountains there, right on the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. She was in the third grade when the Great Depression hit in the 1929. Edith Morgan. Times were bad. They lived up in them mountains. They didn't get no checks. They didn't get no help. They killed something to eat and fixed it or they starved to death or they growed it. And that's the way people had to live back then. She had a brother named Donnie who was 17 years old. When the Great Depression hit, Donnie at 17, boys, left his home to go to work and get a job in Ohio. That boy worked and sent a check home every week to keep his family from starving to death. 17 years old. 17 years old, out working a job and every week sending his check home to support it so his mom and baby sisters wouldn't starve to death. He wasn't at spring break acting a fool and some mom and dad backslid parents paying for it, acting like a two-year-old. He was working a job and paying bills. He sent him checks. To help his family survive. He had to work a solid year before he got up and come home to see his family. 17 years old. At school one day, Edith said a friend of hers said, I saw Donnie walking down the road. Her heart jumped. She hadn't saw her brother in a year. She loved her brother. Families were tight back then. They didn't, they didn't have all the social media. They weren't connected to 10 million other young. Their family's about all they had, family and God. And she'd been taught all her life, pray about stuff, pray to God. The Lord's our refuge. The Lord's our help. She'd been taught that her whole life. And she said, Donnie's home. Donnie's home. She got out of school and ran and the two miles home from school. No bus. No mama there to pick her up. Two miles from school. They had a wagon that transformed. She didn't want to wait on them and took off and run. She fell into his arms. And Donnie, she said, I missed you, Donnie. He said, I missed you too, Edith. She was only in the third grade and he hugged her like that and he pulled out his something in front and he said, I brought you something. And he pulled out a fountain pen. 
Nobody in them days had a fountain pen. You had to be well off. Rich people living in a big city on a fountain pen. And it was the kind people, you remember, you can uh, screw the top of them and put more ink in them. Remember them a long time ago? We used to have them. And, uh, and she said that meant more to her than anything she'd ever had in her life. Think about how the world's changed now. We think we got it hard in this country. That girl got a pen. And she thought this is the most precious. Thing. That's hard for us to imagine. It. She, this is the most precious thing I've ever owned in my life. A pen from the big city. And I own it. Well, a little time went by. And one day she got to looking for a pen. And she couldn't find it. And she looked and she cried and she looked and she cried and could not find it and could not. And finally, she went out and she got down on her knees and she prayed. And she said, dear Lord, please let me find my pen. Dear Lord, please let me find my pen. Lord, please let me find my pen. Lord, if you don't ever do nothing else for me the rest of my life. Can you imagine praying a prayer like that? You know what, what would you do? Just go in there in a stack and get another that's one thing's wrong with us in this country. We've got so much we don't think we need God no more. Brother, she prayed. She wanted her pen. And she kept praying and kept praying and kept praying and kept praying. And she said, in the third grade, she had been taught, like we teach our kids, pray about everything. Pray about everything. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too little. She said she went home. We went in the room. And she got to look around and she had, had a trunk full of old clothes. And for some reason, she's digging in that trunk and reached down in them clothes, and there was that pen. She said, I pulled it out. She said, I smiled. She said, I have no idea to this day how it got down in there. She said, the Lord answered my prayer as a third grader. You say, Brother Danny, I don't know, sir, I believe that sure as I'm standing here. I had him do me like that with car keys. He felt, he felt sorry for Brother Danny. He felt sorry for little Edith. And little, listen, people, the, his eyes on the sparrow. He, he, the very hairs of our head are numbered. Don't you think he knows how to take care of us in this awful time? Sure he does. Hallelujah, he does. He's still God. That's how to pray in a pandemic. I want Miss Desi to come. I want us to stand with her bowed and our eyes closed. You don't, you don't have to come to the altar if you don't want to be close to each other. You can get down over yonder and kneel at your seat or whatever. Do. She's just going to play. We're not going to sing. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We're going to pray in a pandemic. Buddy, if there's ever, ever, ever been a time when we need to pray, it's now. It's now. God help us. God help us. Will you let the Holy Spirit touch your heart tonight. Some's coming to pray in the altar. Some praying said you do, do whatever you want to. It's fine. The Lord can hear you. And we're going to pray together as a church. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads right now, Lord Jesus, we come to you as a group of people asking that you would have mercy upon us. Lord, have to turn from our idols and our false gods. Lord, every day I wake up and I think this can't be happening. Is this really happening? Is this real? Lord, we don't know how much of the stuff we hear is true and how much ain't true. We don't know. God, you do. You know exactly what's right, and exactly what we need to do. Lord, I know exactly what we need to do. We need to turn to you with all of our heart. Have your way in our heart. Do what ought to be done. Bless every single person here tonight. We'll thank you for it. We love you. We pray for our country, pray for our leaders, that they'll make the right decision. I do pray that you'll bring our country through this, Lord. We'll be able to survive, be able to have church, be able to have youth rally, be able to have camp meeting. But God, if you got some other path for us to go, Lord, your will be done. Lord, if people won't repent, Lord, you do whatever you need to do. But Lord, we're going to trust you and do what we know is right. And Lord, when we leave this world, we'll be shouting on the other side forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Keep everybody here safe. Keep everybody here healthy. Watch over our kids. Protect us from this evil virus. We pray. God, somehow or another, 
Lord, let us get through. We'll thank you for it and we love you. I ask you, Lord, to give everybody here the victory. Help us to turn from any known sin in our lives. Lead our kids right. We'll praise you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay, you can turn that camera off for a second and talk. Um, we will have uh, uh, copies of last Sunday's sermons. Might have some tonight. I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat>